What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this one, I'll be saving you a ton of headache if you have multiple monitors and you don't have tons of expendable cash to buy all of them all at once with the same model, resolution, screen size, etc. What do I mean? Well, over the years, I've picked up a 2K monitor, a 4K monitor, 1080p, etc. And I have these lined up next to each other. In my case, my setup looks a little something like this. On the left, I have a 2K monitor, 23 inches or so. And on the right, I have a 1080p monitor that's also 23 inches or so. If I line them up next to each other, they're exactly the same in size and they look pretty much the same from my viewing distance here. They're lined up perfectly. Everything looks great when everything is separated. However, if I open up Notepad, for example, you'll see it here on this screen. As soon as I push it in between them, things look okay, although a little bit weird. The right is a lower resolution, meaning that things are blown up to be a little bit bigger than the left. It's 2K versus 1080, so it's not such a jarring difference. However, if I start moving things up, there's quite a weird disconnect that goes on. I've already reached the top of the screen on the right, but I still have this much space on the left. Down at the bottom, we have the same thing again. I've reached the bottom with this much extra space. It's very weird and of course quite jarring if your screens are all exactly the same size but just different resolutions. On Mac, I've heard that this isn't an issue. However, on Windows, it definitely is. Why is that? Well, you can see things are not the same size here. We have the weird space. However, if I flick over to a view that the computer sees, you can start to understand why. It's pretty much taking the exact pixel values, sticking them next to each other and just pushing it out to the monitors. When we look at it like this, everything looks like it's correct, even though it's actually not. If my monitors were proportional to their resolution, the right one would be smaller than the left and things would line up. However, in real life, they're exactly the same size. So this weird disconnect happens. How do we fix it? Well, that's super simple. Unfortunately, Windows doesn't have a built-in solution to this. However, third-party software to the rescue. It's open source, so you can look through it and decide if you trust it or not. But in the description down below, you'll find a link to Little Big Mouse. Thanks to my girlfriend for suggesting this. If we scroll down past all of the source code, we get to download a compiled version. Click this link here, and you'll see the latest pre-release, Expand Assets, by clicking Assets, and download the exe here. You can see this project's been inactive for a little while. It's probably been two or so years since the last update or major release, including a useful suggestion to submit it to Microsoft Power Toys, which is great, but that hasn't happened yet. This project isn't exactly dead in the water, but it has been a long time since the last official release, even though the code has been updated somewhat recently. If we open up the exe that we just downloaded, it's an installer. So I'll run it and click through the installer as you would any other program. When it's done, we'll make sure run application is ticked and click finish. Now you can see this here, a new window pops up. It's a little bit weird and slidey to drag around, but besides that, this is what we're looking at. You'll see that when I drag my mouse between displays, a weird jump happens right about here, especially near the top. Now, if I go ahead and enable it, run, you can see that weird jump is now vanished. My mouse is moving cleanly between these monitors. That's great. That's the first issue fixed. What about dragging things in between my monitors? Well, you can see here that there's a weird jump when we get across the center bit, simply ignoring the huge snapping feature in the background. When we get to the top of the screen, it's pretty much completely eclipsed. But if I drag it across, it snaps down to roughly the same physical height, which is great. Even though there is a small little jump, it's a little bit jarring, but it's a heck of a lot better than when we started. Dragging from one monitor to the other in real life looks relatively seamless. It ends up at roughly the same height, which is great, even though it does get a little bit bigger still. This is a huge improvement over default Windows behavior, and I much prefer it, even if there's a little jump between monitors. Now, this program does get a lot more advanced. We can go ahead and adjust where our displays are by clicking the button at the very top here. By doing so, we can physically move our monitors around and how they act. Of course, Windows has a similar feature, so it's not too crazy. But when we do, simply click the play button to apply changes and moving between monitors, you can now see what would happen if it's in a completely different place. This is cool and all, but this is built into Windows and a feature you're probably familiar with. I'll move it back, apply changes, and we'll head across to a different tab, this one up here. This allows us to resize screens. 
When we move our mouse across, it'll jump between these two points as these lines are here. It's done some math for us pretty much automatically and allows things to be nice and lined up, even on weird resolutions. You can play around with these, but as these are pretty much perfect and I'll have the software running pretty much always, I'll leave it as is. That way, when I drag things between monitors, it snaps nice and easily. On top of this, we also have a color tab over here so we can more closely match color and things like that between monitors. We can adjust the color settings of each monitor here very easily. But of course, if you've delved into the depths of making things pretty much even, you've probably already done this through your graphics cards control panel, and there's not much you need to do here. So the only other things we really need to get to are these options down here adjust speed and adjust pointer. That's if you have a huge difference in monitors, a huge monitor and a tiny one, you can adjust the pointer speed. So when it gets across to your smaller monitor, it moves in plus minus the same way in real life as if the monitor was actually just extended rather than being something completely separate. So moving a mouse at a certain speed moves at say 10 centimeters in real life, It'll now move it 10 centimeters in real life if you have a much smaller screen, whereas before this wouldn't have happened. Finally, the only other thing I'd recommend checking is load at startup by doing so and applying changes. Whenever you boot up your PC, the software will open automatically in the background and it will keep things nice and seamless between your displays, which is great. When you close this, it'll actually still be running. What we need to do is look at the task tray down here, expand it, and you'll see a new icon, which is this here. Right click, we can open, start, stop, and exit the actual program. By using open, we get back to the configuration screen, which we had open just now. Great. On top of this, if you'd like an infinite loop, you can tick horizontal loop and or vertical loop. I'll go horizontal loop and apply changes. What has this done? Well, looking at my monitors, if I were to drag something between displays, the obvious happens, but if I drag them the other way, you'll see it loops around or wraps around. This can be incredibly useful, especially if you'd like to get around the place without going all the way to the other side of your setup. Say you have three or four monitors, just drag it the other way instead of dragging it across all of your monitors the long way around. It's a really useful feature. Vertical loop, I'll apply. Once again, dragging things up to the top, it takes them down to the bottom. Though I don't really like this as much, you'll only really need to use this if you have monitors stacked up vertically. Some great features here. I'll turn off vertical loop and I'll just be keeping horizontal loop. Now, whether this loop feature interferes with games, I've yet to see. As with some games, your mouse cursor will leave the game window and move around your desktop, in which case this program may mess around with it and cause some weird things to happen if you look around in game very quickly using your mouse. But that's yet to be seen. If that's too annoying, you can always right click stop it from your task tray here whenever you're playing a game and once again start it when you're back to desktop browsing. Or of course, if you so wish, you can turn off load at startup and just open the program whenever you choose to use it. Anyways, that's about it for this super quick guide. Thank you for watching. I've been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.